What if you could keep track of every language you're learning in one place? Whether you're learning Japanese, Spanish, Korean, French, or any other language, a central system is crucial. In this video, we'll be showing you a tour of our language learning notion template, which will allow you to help learn any language and keep track of them in a central location. Store your flashcards, vocab, schedules, progress, and more. If this is helpful, it would help us out a lot if you could subscribe, like, and click the notification bell. So let's dive right in. So first, let's do a brief overview of our template. So when you open up this template, you'll notice that there's a section for your languages that you're currently learning and a left-hand sidebar where you can have your favorite phrase and some quick links for each of the different databases that we have included here. And here we have notes section so that you can take your notes easily through the first page. And then we have a study calendar, which shows various things from study schedules, lessons, to meetings with your conversation partner. And then there is also a separate tab where you can see your exams and assignments. So now let's go over what you would need to do if you were to add a new language. So we already have beginner Spanish here, but we'll just create another one for beginner Spanish just to show you. So if we go plus new, we can add a new language and immediately it's going to load our template that we've created for new language, which is there by default. And let's call this intermediate Spanish. So there's multiple ways you can use this template. If you want to learn many different languages, you could separate your languages by actual languages or you can separate it by different levels. So if it's Spanish 101 and then you want another one for Spanish 102 and so on, that's also completely possible. So when opening up this page for a language, you'll probably want to use a full page view just because there's so many things in here. So let's just open it up bigger. And now you'll see that there is a start and end date. So you want to put what day you start this and you can mark the end date when you're done. And basically you can archive it when you're done as well so that it disappears from your main page that you're currently working on. And then we also have a progress bar that's determined by the goals that you set. So now that we've opened this up, now we can start filling it in. So again, at the top, we have our notes so that you can always take easy access notes from anywhere. So let's say that we wanted to add a new note that we took during a one-on-one -on -one lesson. So we could put one-on-one -on -one lesson notes and the type would be a lesson. And you can add resources if you've already added them. So for example, we have some books here that we've added through this resources database. And then you can add tags as needed if you'd like. So for example, if you are currently in a textbook chapter or a course, you could just put intermediate Spanish chapter one, for example. And now it's our progress and goals. So if we click today, we see our today view and currently it's in quarters, but you can also look at this in a yearly view in case you want to plan a bit further and advance. So let's say that in March, there's a really important exam for intermediate Spanish. You could just add a new thing here. We can just put new and you can title it final exam. And then you could add the date. So let's say that it is in March 8th. And then we can see here our final exam and you can kind of open it up as you need. And then what you can do is that you can make various goals leading up to it. So let's say that before this, you want to finish chapter five to 10 in textbook. And this is what's going to precede the final exam. So you need to finish this one before you can do the final exam. So you can do something like this. And once you're done with finish chapter five, you could check this off and it shows 50% completion. So then your progress is going to update based on that as well, like this. And then next we have vocabulary. So you can just add new words you learn through this area. And let's say that we have a new word. And 
and then you can put the new word meaning. And you can put tags, for example, if this is from intermediate Spanish textbook chapter one. And then you can put notes if you need some more explanation. And then you can immediately also look at this as a flashcard. So here we see this new word. And if you want to show the answer, you just click here and you see the new word like this and you can move it around whether you're learning it now or whether it's learned. And we've kind of grouped this based on these tags so that you can keep track of your different decks of cards and words. But if you need to do further filtering through your vocabulary list, you can also just click filter here and you can add a filter, which would be the tag and you can check off which list you want to see. So next after vocabulary, we have resources. So let's say that we need to have our resources here for the textbook. So intermediate Spanish textbook. And the type would be a textbook and you could add the URL or files and media here. And what's cool is that once you have a resource in here, you can actually tag it through here. So if this is through here, you can just tag it like this. And next we want to show you the contacts. So in contacts, you can add people who are relevant to your study. So for example, it could be a conversation partner, study partner, a teacher, and so on. So if we just click plus new, then you can add the name of the person. And let's say that this person's name is Richard Smith. And the relation is a study partner. And you can choose to add a cover photo of the picture of the person if you frequently can't remember people's faces. Or you can choose to view these contacts in table view. You could add their email, phone, and URL to their socials if needed. And then we can see it in table view like this so that you can just keep track of everyone relating to your studies easily. So if you need to reach out to Richard for some conversation practice, you just have their email, phone, and everything here. And next we have the study calendar. So if you need to add a new study schedule, you could just put here like this, and it's already tagged with the language. And let's say that you're going to be studying with Richard Smith, you could put like this, and the type would be a study. And here you can click new entry, and then you can start planning out your study schedule here. So if this is a study session, you could first start with conversation practice, followed by some listening, and so on. So it's easy to plan things out. And depending on your schedule, it could be assignments, it could be events and so on. So you can just mark everything in your calendar like this. And now let's go back to the main template. So now we're back at the main template and now we see intermediate Spanish here with a 50% completion and the start date. And one thing we should do is actually add a cover photo. So we can just click here and click add cover, change cover, and let's put a picture of Spain. And now it's here like this. And then we see the notes that we already made here, the one-on-one -on -one lesson notes tagged with everything correctly. We see our study calendar with the intermediate Spanish study session here and with who. And if we go back up, you can start seeing all of these quick links as well. So if you click progress tracker, You'll see the beginner Spanish here in the completion, the Japanese and the intermediate Spanish here like this, and you can see through your timelines. And study calendar basically just shows the study calendar. We have the vocabulary list, and if we go here, you can just see all regardless of the language. So you do need to do some kind of filter if you want to see it in different views. So you could filter it by language and choose the correct one here. There's also a note section, contacts and resources. So if we click contacts, you'll see the people who are in your contacts and you can easily see who this is related to. So these people are from beginner Spanish. And then we have our resources section as well with the name of the book or textbook or any other resource. So we have here podcast, video, web article, website and app. 
So you can keep track of everything that would be a good resource for you. So that's the basics of how to use our language learning template. If you're interested in this, we'll leave the link to it in our store in the description below. If you have any questions, comments, or anything confusing in this video, feel free to let us know, and we hope to see you in the next one.